I'm down to one bar. Uh-oh. Well, that means we need to keep this short. See if we can do that. Hi, everybody. This is Big Anglovich. And this is Rich Outfield. Donate to the podcast. <laughs> yes, night. please. As we've said before, we need new Zooms. And Zooms are... <laughs> We're not talking like an action figure of the guy from Flash. We are actually talking about a portable recorder slash microphone that is by the company called Zoom. And they're really cool. They're really good machines. Ours, unfortunately, are on their way out. And it's causing us a lot of problems. We've had to re-record episodes, etc., etc. And so if we could take some of the element of that out of the works, we'd get more episodes out. So, you know, that would be awesome, right? Yes, I think us getting more episodes out would be awesome. Or us getting new Zooms, which are you talking about? Both. I mean, new Zooms would help us get more episodes out, and so then it would be awesome. I guess, but if they're like this episode, uh, I don't know that people really want to hear them. Because <laughs> this is the dark side of The Force Awakens we're going to talk about. That's right. Come to the dark side of The Force Awakens, Rish. Okay. Um, I'm already halfway there. Right? We have cookies. Oh, okay. Well, hey. Do you think that's funny? Did you ever think that was funny? The um, come to the dark side, we have cookies? I think I saw it on a t-shirt and was amused by it once, but... Yeah. Why is that a meme anyways? Is there something that that comes from? You want to say that it's Family Guy, right? But, is uh, it? But I don't think that it is. I like cookies. Oh, yeah, okay. So well, I would boy, go to the dark side. a bold statement from you. <laughs> I would go to the dark side for cookies, I have to admit. Yeah, we're going to... I'm not going to say that this is the negative episode, but we're going to allow ourselves to go negative. We're going to talk about things that we didn't like as well as things that we did like. Rish was saving something special that he liked for later, so so that may come out today, or maybe it'll just never make it in. We'll see. You never know. But the, one more positive thing before we go into the oh, negative well, there you go. is that... Isn't it kind of amazing how everybody when that movie came out, wanted to talk about Star Wars. There weren't people who were just like, eh, I'm really looking forward to Deadpool. <laughs> Everybody had an opinion. Everybody had things that they liked. Everybody had questions that hadn't my been answered. Everybody said, oh, I can't wait until this happens, or we find out this, or... My three-year-old son was that way. Oh, though. okay. My three-year-old son did not want to sit through this movie for some reason. He could not care less, which is really makes me sad. But I still hold out hope for him because I was right about four years old when Star Wars, the, the first film, came out. Shoot, probably even less than that. Two and a half. So, but you didn't see it at two and a half, did I you? didn't, no. The first okay. time I saw it was when it was, came on TV for the first time, which was okay. years later. Yeah, so, I think that was 83. So, you know, there's still a chance for him. But what my son did want to do was sit on the little standee they had outside the theater of Deadpool with the Santa Claus hat on. You oh. could like, sit like you were sitting on his lap. So he, he was that one guy who wanted to talk about Deadpool okay, well, <laughs> instead it, of Star Wars. We should mention this Deadpool thing. <laughs> Deadpool comes out in February. I think it comes out Valentine's Day weekend. Uh-huh. Um, I have absolutely no intention of seeing that movie. Oh, yeah? But if people really, really want us to review it, there is a way they can get me to go see that movie. Yeah? Yeah. Should Should we... Tell them, or who we already told them? We already told them, but tell them again, just in case they've forgotten in the two minutes since we last said it. Okay, editor at dunesteef.com is our PayPal address. You can just donate to us, and or you can send us an email at that same address and let us know, oh, I really want to hear you talk about Deadpool, or I want to know why you don't want to go see Deadpool. It looks awesome! The frat boys are really, really excited about it. And... Uh, there's also on, you know, the main Dune Steve page, there's a, the little button up in the corner where you can donate once a month? Yeah, donate you can donate once a so quarter. it's five bucks a month, five bucks a quarter, or a one-time donation of your choosing. You can just pick whatever number you want to put in there. So yeah, go ahead and donate and tell Rish to see Deadpool, because I'd like to see it myself. 
I guess I'm one of the frat boys. You've always have been. And I, I probably won't see it unless I go to see it with Rish because it's rated R. And I'm not going to take my yeah. kids to it. Although, to tell you the truth, my kids all, there all are, of them really want to see it. Yeah, there are so many kids that really want to see this. And, and I, well, we could do a whole episode. Yeah, maybe two or three weeks from now we'll do a What's the Deal with Deadpool? episode where I just, I have to ask, why does he resonate so strongly with this generation? Not that I'm, I'm judging them. Usually I do judge them, but in this case, I'm not. I just, I'm not really sure where it comes from, what it is. Yeah, I don't Because there either. haven't been other Deadpool movies. I don't know that there have been Deadpool cartoon series or anything like that, that they have been exposed to that we haven't, where it's like, oh, well, you know. They it, watched that Mario cartoon when they were kids, and now that, you know, that kind of thing. Yeah, it makes me feel like Batman. When the first Batman came out, there was a hell of a lot of merchandise when that Michael... There hadn't been a Batman anything well, f- for a long time. 1989 was the year of the Batman, though. Did okay. you know that? The Chinese calendar. <laughs> okay. But yeah, everybody had Batman hats. And so I see Deadpool stuff all the time now, too. Maybe we can, as part of that, maybe we can go back to my house and interview my kids and find out why the hell they like Deadpool so much. Because they all do. They forced me to buy a Deadpool comic book so that they could read it. Hmm. And I was just like, okay. I read it too, and it was all right, but I don't get it. Uh, But we're not talking Deadpool. To be continued, guys. Yeah, yeah, that'll be continued. Okay, we're going to start, I'm going to start off with... It's not like a real big complaint, but the movie starts off, basically, okay, we're 40, 30 years, somewhere in between that, uh, since the end of the last movie, right? The end of the last movie, uh, Return of the Jedi, Luke kills, no, Luke doesn't kill anybody. Darth Vader kills the Emperor and then dies. Like, like maybe Luke killed him because he kind of died from his wounds that he sustained. The, the Emperor killed Vader. Okay, so the Emperor, Emperor killed Vader back. He shocked him enough that his respirator shut down. And then the, the Empire basically falls. I mean, the Emperor's dead. He dies. The Death Star's blown up. Ewoks are excited. In yep, nub. special edition, everybody else in the, around the galaxy is also excited. They pull down a statue of the Emperor, etc. And yeah, we're all free from the tyrannical boot of this evil empire. And now 40 years later... 30 years later. Okay, I'm going to say 35 just to uh, <laughs> split the difference. Okay. Okay, I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to say 30. <laughs> 30 years later, here we are. And is it just me or does it feel like nothing's changed? The Empire just changed their name to the First Order. The Rebels changed their name to the Resistance, but they're still Rebels. What are they resisting? Shouldn't they be like the Army or just the, you know, I mean, they're they're the establishment. They should be, but, like, but they didn't act like it. No, they didn't at all. They they're acted like, like a very small little separate force, a ragtag team. Yeah. Once they're, again. They're like the hippies that... They should be the yuppies now, but instead they're still hippies 30 years later. It sucks to be the man. Maybe that's why. Well, but we would never know because we don't get to see the man because they make it sound like maybe the Senate rules the galaxy. Is it the Senate? The Republic, the New Republic. Yeah, they but we get one Republic. shot of a couple of people before they're killed, yeah, and so- it makes me wonder well, is the First Order then? just doing a coup and they're taking over and they've been biding their time all this time because it feels like, no, they've been in power for a long time and everybody fears the first Yeah, order. it feels like that. I mean, they've got a damned Death Star again, which is a bajillion times larger now than the last Death Star. You know, to build something that size, it seems like you need a lot of money and a lot of people working... You know, I mean, just to build a skyscraper, it takes 10 years sometimes and a sh- crap load of freaking construction workers, etc. All, all this stuff is there. I mean, that's the way it is in movies and sci-fi in general. You don't really think through that kind of stuff. Right, You're but just that- supposed to suspend disbelief and just think, yeah, there's a Death Star. Okay, that could happen. 
Okay, I, I guess you're right, but there is the shot, the Lenny Riefenstahl shot, where you see oh, thousands yeah. and thousands yeah, and thousands of First Order guys. So and, let's say that they and all... And what's face is giving his Hitler speech out there. Yeah. Going, kind, waving his arm and... Sorry, yeah, go on. Th th this happened. But th if we <laughs> assume that every one of those guys had a hand in building the Star Killer base, is which they called the new Death Star, then I, I think it's doable if they had thousands and thousands of workers. Do you really think that all the stormtroopers were the construction workers? I, well, I don't know, like, man. Okay, now you're done with your jackhammer. Let me train you on this gun. Uh, <laughs> well, they were workers that did you know it's like somebody has to clean the toilet and we found out that it was finn <laughs> you know what i'm saying that, yeah i guess that is true do you really think it's a stormtrooper that cleans the toilet though he as much as said so in the movie that he uh, his previous job was sanitation right on star killer base so do they march around in their stormtrooper outfits carrying the garbage cans to the trash chute to toss it down or do they wear like just coveralls when they're doing that there are <laughs> imperials in the first star wars walking around in like coveralls and fancy hats that could easily have been janitorial, janitorial staff, staff of the, of the empire, empire. <laughs> once but anyways. again my toilet has backed up you will clean it Yes, Emperor. I don't want to clean it. You will clean it. I will clean it. So anyways, it doesn't seem to me like anything has changed, which I know they were trying to go for. Like we talked about it in the last episode about how, yeah, you know, this looks really familiar. It looks a lot like the last trilogy, but also it seems exactly like the last trilogy. And on top of that, this seems exactly like the plot of Star Wars. You have a desert planet at the start and there's a little robot that goes beep boop boop beep and everybody wants to get that robot because he has some kind of special piece of information on him they got to find that robot the robot finds our heroes and then they go on their special journey and then they they're able to go to blow up the death star again and i don't know what it is about that but it just it feels like there's got to be something else that they could have done with this. And I, I know they're trying to, you know, erase the bad taste of the prequels by doing something better than that. But did it have to be exactly the same? You know, I, well, I've heard a lot of people air their misgivings about that. But, you know, it doesn't bother me at all. For 30 years, 32 years, I've heard people complain that there was another Death Star in Return of the Jedi. And I uh -huh. can't believe they were out of ideas on the third movie and they had to create another Death Star. And that's never bothered me. It's just, you know, that well, that's part of what it is. And that's what happened in the movie. That actually happened, guys, a long time ago in a galaxy far, <laughs> far away. That hasn't bothered me. But the, the more times they go back, because basically that's what they did at the end of Phantom Menace is went up and blew up the big space station up in the sky with their planes and saved the planet. And now here it is, number four. They're going up and they're blowing the big space station up with the, the one little port. You just got to get a photon torpedo in there and boom, you got it. Good job. Proton torpedo. Oh, sorry. Anyhow. Uh, photon is Star Trek, huh? To me, this is, in many ways, what Superman Returns was. Okay. Which is Star Wars' greatest hits. <laughs> They made a movie that took the parts that they liked best from the previous trilogy and they, you know, they made a movie that was that kind of thing. And uh -huh. I know there are people that fudge and hate Superman Returns. I, I talked to one of them just this week who was just like, oh, he was red in the face. He's like, you like Superman Returns? And it turned out he hated the Christopher Reeve movies as well. And I was like, oh, okay, well, that I guess explains why you would hate Superman Returns so much. But he's like, no, no, the Superman, the, the Christopher Reeve movies at least had charm in the, and I was like, oh, no, you lost me a long time ago, man. It's, it's all right, don't backpedal. But yeah, the same way, it's just like, yeah, I, there are a lot of things that are familiar in Force Awakens, but I, I can't help but feel like that's by design. That's the, hey, we're gonna, we're not gonna tread on anything new we're not going to try anything new like the prequels did. We're going for familiarity. This is comfort food, folks. 
And we want you to say, oh, this is exactly how I remembered Star Wars. Thank you, J.J. Mm-hmm. And that's my opinion. Maybe that's not what he was going for, but dollars to donuts. Yeah, that's makes, what he was going it for. It makes sense. And I, I suppose that's probably a good reason why this is now the one that passed Avatar up and is the number one movie of all. Well, that, that, that's inflation. <laughs> that's charging $14 a ticket. That's what you and I paid to see Avatar on opening night. And the funny thing is, here it is. Five years later, and I've never paid that much to see a movie since that night. Yeah. Why would you ever pay that much money? Seriously, why, why would you ever watch a movie in 3D? With Avatar, that was the thing, though. Like You had to see it in 3D. Because, for one, they actually shot it in 3D. Which, has any movie ever done that since? <laughs> a few have, sure. Because they, they jumped on the bandwagon. But a lot of people realized... You could just post convert them to yeah, 3D and the 3D. still charge the extra six bucks. And so, yeah, not a lot of people actually do the 3D filming because, you know, it's cumbersome and it takes time and it's work. And why would you want to work? Yeah, when you could just have computers work for you. But anyhow, sorry about the Avatar reference. But, I mean, yes, Star Wars Force Awakens is a phenomenon and people are talking about it and people are going to see it again and again. But it's still not the phenomenon that the first Star Wars was. Or the Titanic oh, definitely was. Not, or, yeah. or, you know what I mean? If you do the old adjusting for inflation thing, it's still got a long ways to go. Yeah, I, But I, I read... wouldn't be surprised if it gets there. It won't. Or close to there, anyway. <laughs> Sorry, that, that's beside the point. Just because a movie makes money doesn't mean that it's good. And just because a movie doesn't make money doesn't mean that it's bad. I think we talked about that with uh, Last Dinosaur. But the fact that people are going to see it again says something more than the money you know what i mean if people are like oh i can't wait to see this with my kids or i can't wait to take my girlfriend or it's like oh my mistress hasn't seen this yet i've really (laughs) got to go see it a third time that means something and you think you'll see it again soon or you're going to wait till the dollar theater or you don't do you how do you feel a pressing need to see it again i would like to see it again did you like it so much less than i do that you're okay to not see it again I, no i would like to see it again i'd really i i don't know if it will be before it makes it to the dollar theater but it might be i don't know i got you know like like you were saying you know i went and saw it with my whole family and you've already seen it I don't know who else I'm going to go see it with. My mistress has seen it, too, so... Oh, well, see, that's too bad. So I you would... got to find somebody else to see it with, you know what I mean? You can't just be like, well, I haven't seen this by myself yet. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you go. That's, that's special. <laughs> I have seen it a second time, and the first time we recorded this episode, I hadn't. And I have to admit that a lot of my negativity diminished seeing it the second time okay in the same way that when i would go see like those x-men movies or spider-man movies or whatever and they'd made all of these unnecessary changes and oh my gosh did you see so-and-so's costume it was terrible or oh geez i can't believe they do that why would they have the kingpin murder his parents that doesn't make any sense kind of thing the second time i would go see those movies i was already used to the changes i was already used to knowing that Green Goblin's costume was going to look terrible or whoever it was was going to look terrible. And so I was just able to enjoy the movie for what it was the second time. But the first time I saw The Force Awakens, I was really disappointed at how little it told us. (laughs) There were Uh so many questions that you and I had, that everybody had, leading up to that movie. And it answered some of them. Uh Uh-huh. But it also asked a buttload of new questions or presented mysteries within mysteries, within enigmas, within secrets, where I just like, oh, wait, wait, what? When did that happen? What, what happened with that? Oh, you're not going to tell us? The credits are rolling? How dare you? And that really bothered me the first time I saw it. You know, how long has Luke been gone? Why did Luke go? What has he been doing? What is he doing on this planet? Who is Kylo Ren? Why did he turn to the dark side? Who are the Knights of Ren? Who are all these other people surrounding him? Who was that old guy? That Seca or Tvanteca that is at the very beginning of the movie. How does he know Leia went back when she was a princess? How does he know where Luke is? You know, why does R2 wake up? What happened to Captain Phasma? Was she just really well designed and they didn't give her anything to do? Were all her scenes cut out? Kind of thing. You know what I mean? All these things. What the F is Snoke? What kind of name is Snoke? Is Snoke really that big? Who is he? What happened to his face? 
It's like I think when he's did he's actually Han... much smaller than that, and it's he's like Napoleon, but you know because he can, it's it's a compensation kind of thing. It's like when you get the sports car because you have a really little penis. Okay, so well, that, <laughs> see that would be interesting if he turned out to be. Do you remember the little people in? Willow, that was not 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 what Willow often good was. Yeah, those things. If he was tiny like that, yeah. and you're just like, whoa, that's why he only appears in hologram. <laughs> he's because be, he's a wee little guy. He's gonna be played by Warwick Davis. In the- <laughs> <laughs> I love Warwick <laughs> Davis. Give Warwick Davis something to do. He was in this movie, but I don't he think was. he had anything to do. To guy in the background. Yeah, and yeah, the, and another big question that I had was how long has all of this been going on? How long has the First Order existed? When did Kylo Ren turn to the dark side? When did Han and Leia split up? Did they split up because of this thing that their son did? Or were there always problems kind of thing? Whose fault was it that Kylo Ren went bad? Et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Why did they name their son Ben? Et cetera, et cetera. I had a million questions, none of which were answered. Uh-huh. And later, you know, I had a couple people say, well, here's here's what happened. Here are who the Knights of Ren are and all that. And I was like, nope, that wasn't in the movie. That doesn't count. So I was Just frustrated. Just in the about- next movie, they're going to have the Knights of Stimpy. And that's when it's going <laughs> to get really confusing. Still better name than Snoke. <laughs> uh, the problem of that was just, you know, it's like I, I wanted to know. I felt that some of these things were important to know. Uh, I needed to know the timeline. I wanted to know, okay, who is Ray? Who was that pe- person that left Ray there? You know, why did they leave her? Is this related to Luke Skywalker? Why is Ray? Awful child abuser are they? And that they're just going to dump her on some desert world. Say, here, it's seven year old, take care of yourself. And some of these complaints that I'm making are probably pretty spurious. I can hear you, if you're a defender of this movie, say, come on, we don't need to know you know, about Captain Phasma's outfit or anything like that. And you're right. But things like, did General Hux and Captain Phasma escape the destruction of Starkiller Base? That's an important effing story point that was not answered. And people will say, well, you'll find out in a year and a half. No, I needed to find out in this movie. It's part of this movie. So, you know, things like that, where it's just like, well, no, I needed a little bit of that. I talked to somebody who absolutely hated the prequels and really loved this movie. And I was like, oh, really? Okay, what, what did you love? And he said, I loved that there was no talking. <laughs> and I said, what? That there was no talking? Well, there was, you mean by Luke? <laughs> and he goes, no, that there were no scenes where people sat down and explained something to each other. And I guess what he was talking about was, you know, the Senate scenes or the You're constant bickering and, and all that talking. Just walking down a long hallway, talking as they have their hands behind their back and Yoda floats along on a stupid little thing. Um, I can understand that because that... The prequels really did suck. I guess, but, but I needed that missing. in Some... The Force Awakens. I wanted talking. One of the best scenes, and I think you told me this last week, so I'm stealing your line. What? In the movie was when Han, for 45 seconds, explains the universe to Finn and Rey. It was a great scene. It was like uh-huh. a Jedi. The dark side, it's all true. It was, yeah, I knew Luke <laughs> Skywalker. It's all true. <laughs> the holiday special, Life Day, <laughs> Lumpy Mala. That's Itchy I kept, I kept and his virtual reality Diane Carroll porn. It was all real. Yeah. Easy, Chewy. That was from the, they did the Honest Trailers version of oh, the trailer okay. where they have him going, it's all true. And then he starts naming off all the shit from the prequels. Midi-chlorians. It all happened. It's real. <laughs> all right, well... Which totally I stole your thunder because last week, yes, you wouldn't leave it alone and I'd get angry every time. I was like, stop <laughs> it. Stop saying that. Don't mention midi chlorians again. Midi-chlorians. But I needed some scenes where people said, okay, here is the deal. This is the New Republic and the Senate and what's going on. And this is the resistance. And this is how long we've existed. And this is why there are so few of us. I needed that. You needed an extra long crawl. You needed, instead of just three paragraphs, like nine or ten, or just maybe a couple pages. It could have been like the opening of Beauty and the Beast, where they have the book, and they just keep turning the page, turning the page. Dude, that... <laughs> okay, here's what else has happened. 
And Luke that is now back on an story in, in 45 <laughs> seconds in Beauty and the Beast is so fudge and gray. And you and I could probably quote it from memory because it's poetry. It's just wonderful, you know. And, and it, you get all the backstory that you need, which Lucas could make three movies out of, in just that one little sequence. Anyhow, that was a complaint that I had the first time I saw it. And when I saw it the second time, I was like, I knew that we were not going to find out what happened to Phasma. And I knew we were not going to find out what Ray's deal was or her parentage or what, you know, kind of thing. And why, you know, why R2 you came Did pay up. extra attention in those scenes, though? Like, where's the flashback? She's like, no, don't go. Did you, like, look? Who's I background? sure did. Can I see somebody? Is there some... oh, wait, there's the person. I can see. Is that Grandma? And if you see the movie again, I would hope that you try and pay attention to the thing. And that's one of the reasons why those Star Wars, the original Star Wars films, were so rewatchable. Is because you would notice something new every single time you watched that movie, whether it was a new alien or a new special effect or something little or the, thing that they put in there. Or the part where the stormtrooper walks into the wall. I had seen Star Wars over a hundred <laughs> times before I ever saw that stormtrooper hit his head on the door. Yeah, I didn't see it. And I, I laughed 20. so hard. I couldn't believe that that had been in the movie all that time. And yeah, that's the sort of thing that made those movies so beloved for our generation is you could never get sick of them, or at least I, I couldn't. And so, yeah, see Force Awakens again and see if maybe your opinion changes. There are still problems with the story. And you're right, there probably are way too many repeats, you know, whatever you want to call, callbacks maybe is the word we're looking for. But I was able to let a lot of that go the second time. And uh, I had my five-year-old nephew, he was sitting next to me, and then about halfway through the movie he sat on my lap. And, and then he urinated on He you. He didn't urinate, but he, I looked down at him about the time when Han is killed and he was asleep <laughs> and I shook him awake during like the climactic stuff, you know, the lightsaber fight and all that. Cause I figured a five-year-old's going to dig this and he wouldn't wake up and that. And so I was like, Oh, that's too bad. Cause I, you know, I wanted it to be special to him the way that star Wars is special to me. But after the movie was over, I said, you know, you fell asleep for the end. Do you want to go see the movie again? So you find out what you missed. And he said, yeah. And I was like, Oh, Okay, well, all hope is not lost then, unlike your kid. Yeah. <laughs> the good thing about all that complaints that you just uh, spewed forth upon us mm -hmm. is that there are several more movies to come. And there's probably a lot that we're going to find out. And the, the thing is that we all know there's more than one movie to come. And yeah, there was a climax and stuff like that at the end of this movie, but it also it obviously wasn't over either because it ended on, I'm going to hold this out to you, and we're going to stand here for a while while the helicopter circles us. <laughs> yes, they um, did. So you know that that's just the beginning. You know, yeah, we had an ending, but it's also just the beginning. And we all knew that was going to be the case anyways. What if it isn't? What if episode eight starts up and it's two years later? Okay. And Rey is just finishing her Jedi training <laughs> at the hands of Luke. And we never find out any of this stuff. It could happen. But we know that there's more movies and we know that we're going to find out the answers to some of this stuff. We're going to find out the answers to Rey's parentage. We're going to find out why she was just dumped on Jakku. Ah! We're going to find out more about Kylo Ren and his Knights of Ren and Stimpy and all that stuff. The, the stuff is to come, and you you are uh, the kind you watched a lot of J.J. Abrams TV shows, etc. And I believe these are your words that I'm now repeating back to you: is that he's that guy. He's the guy that's the king of. Here's a question, and now we're going to answer that question, but give you three more. And now when we answer another one of those questions, we're going to give you three more. And it's just this giant tree by the time it's done, of questions that aren't answered yet. And that's just kind of his thing, and he really knows how to string you along and keep you watching and keep you wanting more and keep you wondering, what is this? What's that? What's happening next? It seems like a really good guy to put in charge of part one of a three-part trilogy, because we've got enough questions that the rest of the two movies can just be answering those all off now. And I bet there'll be a bunch that won't be answered. But again, I mean, we know 
It's not like Star Wars when Star Wars came out. You didn't know what was... It was a movie. It was probably the only movie that... You know, I mean, frick, George Lucas probably assumed his career was over after this movie because nobody was behind him. It, it was probably going to go nowhere, and instead it turned out to be a gigantic success and his life was saved, but... You know, he had no idea that he'd ever be making sequels and then prequels and then selling off his company for a whole lot of money so that they can make sequels and so and forth. And prequels. <laughs> yeah, but we know that that's all on, on its way. So the good thing is that it's coming again and it's coming again and it's coming again. It's going to be a yearly fixture now. So I can't complain too much about all the questions that are left. I, I actually... I'm excited for the next movie to see what's going to happen. Okay, um, but Anakin Skywalker in the first movie, they have this whole question of his parentage, right? That it was a, <laughs> that it was a, a what do you call it? Uh, a, a miraculous, con- I guess, immaculate, immaculate conception. conception, and all this stuff, and and you know who was his? There was no father, and all that stuff, and it's a question that is asked. The same with uh, Sifo Diaz in the second prequel. They make a fudge and big deal about Sifo Diaz. Uh, or maybe I'm, I'm remembering it wrong, but I remember a fudge big deal. And these questions are never answered. And, you know, if you're a huge fan of that era of storytelling, you can say, well, there was an expanded universe book that explained. <laughs> and then there was the Darth Plagueis the Wise sp- speech in episode three. And there was a Darth Plagueis book that talks about him messing around with the chlorians and they're creating life. And the Anakin was perhaps a reaction to that. And I was like, yeah, yeah, that's great. But it doesn't make up for the fact that these questions are not answered in the movies. And so, you know, yes, if there are seven more Star Wars movies that talk about the origin of the Knights of Ren, that talk about who Snoke was, that give Phasma actually something to do, it doesn't make up the fact that none of that happens in Force Awakens. And that's, that's just you my opinion. You can say that, but, I, but I, 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 yeah, that's your opinion. I'm just saying my opinion is that I, I don't think that it's important that you have to have it all answered in the one. Because we know it's not over. It's not like books versus movies. Or, or, or something like that, where, oh yeah, there was a expanded universe book that only the really weird guys read that explains all that. But with these ones, the next movie is going to explain it. I mean, and the next movie is, as far as this goes, this is a pilot to a damn TV show. <laughs> this is not going to end. It's not going to end in three movies either. It's not going to just be like, oh yeah, episode nine, we did our bit. That's what we paid a billion dollars for is to just quit. They're just going to keep making Star Wars movies until people just are like, no, nah, you know, I, uh, I'm bored with them. I don't, I don't ever need to see another Star Wars movie. And that's the majority opinion in the entire world, which, I don't know, they'd have to do a lot of really bad movies for that to ever happen. So, you know, it's, it's coming. What I wanted to complain... Okay. About, let's see, what else can I complain about? Well, so far, nothing, which is weird because you're the one that didn't like the movie. <laughs> now I'm just angry because they're like, no, no, what I'm about, the negative one. You're the one that didn't like it. What about Maz Kanada? What about Canada? Maz Kanada? Did you like her? I don't have a problem with her. Was it, is it a CG thing? Was it the fact yeah. that she was small? It was the CG thing that bugged me. She was not CG, dude. Oh, she wasn't? She was a real-life character? Well, I'm just saying the CG was so good, you'd (laughs) never know that was CG. Yeah, it was one of those things. Maybe it's prequel backlash or something like that. I don't know. But, uh, yeah, it's just one of those things with the face that... Like, I prefer Admiral Akbar to Maz (laughs) Kanata. Okay. Or whatever. Her name is Maz Canada. Because, I don't know, her face had too much detail, too much movement, too much... I don't know, it just looked... didn't work for me. And the goggle, the weird goggles were weird. I don't know why. And I didn't even complain about that last time around. No, you didn't. For some reason, that was one thing that I wanted to complain about and never got to. I just wasn't a fan of her CG look. There was somebody else that I wanted to complain about. Oh, okay, here's this. What about, <laughs> what about this? So we have Kylo Ren, right? Okay, here we go. He starts off the movie, and he's a supremely badass mother effer. 
He comes out and he looks scary. He's got that mask and the whole cape and hood and all that stuff that makes him look really like a pretty awesome villain. And he is tough. And he... Poe Dameron shoots at him with his blaster and... And he just freezes it in midair. He's like, oh yeah, boop. I can stop light. That seems like... I mean, first of all, that's something we've never seen before. So that's interesting. Because, I, yeah, I remember doing I went, oh, that's new. That's what I actually did in the theater. And the guy behind me probably said, you're an idiot. But anyways. No, it was, it was beyond anything we had seen before. It yeah. seemed to be like level six Jedi. <laughs> yeah, it, he seems really, really, really tough and awesome. And, in that scene. And then as time goes on, he seems less and less and less awesome. First of all, he takes off his mask. And this dude is weird looking. I don't know. I mean, I, you think Benedict Cumberbatch is like a super, super weird looking guy. And you don't? Well, he's nothing compared to this guy. For one, he might be a little weird, but this guy is like tall and gangly. And then he's got the world's largest nose. Uh, what was that guy from the piano or whatever it was that had a really giant nose? Adrian Brody. Yeah, Adrian Brody doesn't hold a candle to this guy. And on top of that, he's got gigantic ears too. But I'm willing to bet that there are probably 50 women listening to this podcast who think I'm a complete effing idiot and that that guy's so sexy. Dude, don't be so hard on yourself. <laughs> There's not three women listening to this well, podcast. I guess that's probably true. And then... And he's, but he does have long, sexy, black, thick locks of hair. But his face is kind of like weird and narrow and odd looking. And he goes from being scary to being like, oh, wow, he's weird looking. And they do a lot of shots of him stomping around like when he's mad and stuff. And he seems, every time he has a shot, it seems like he's kind of gangly and like... Not very coordinated, and maybe that he's wearing like really, really thick uh, soled boots or something like that. Like he's got kiss boots on or something like that. <laughs> so, like these big platforms on to make him look scarier. Uh, I don't know. I think it was a mistake for them to have. I mean, it was, I don't know. I thought it was neat when he's just like, oh yeah, I'll take it off. See, look at me. I'm, I'm just a dude. That seemed cool, but it was also really took the mystery out. I remember back when we, and this was years ago, used to talk about <laughs> the uh, Battlestar Galactica Cylons and how they scary were they scary, were. Scary, scary bad guys at first. And then as the series went on and on, they started like, well, uh, we need some story. Why don't we do a story about like how the Cylon society is? And then it took mystery away from these scary bad guys until pretty soon they were just like, you know, yeah, it's just another number six. Oh, yeah. I heard they're good for Cylon sandwiches, but beyond that, a glowing spine sandwiches, I think, is what Ron Moore called it. But anyways, yeah, it, it took all the... The more you reveal about them, it seems, the less scary they can be. Now... A lot of people say Kylo Ren's really awesome because he's layered and he's got these issues. And that was kind of the big thing in the film was his issues and he's being pulled to the light and he's being pulled to the darkness and how can he hold it together and, you know, results in the big moment that everybody's going to talk about. But it's seemed like he could have been better. Well, I, I believe it was a mistake to set him up as this insane badass at the very beginning and then have him become more and more ineffectual as the movie went on to the point where at the end, he is defeated in battle by a girl who has never picked up a lightsaber before. And when that happened, I was just like, wow, was Luke just the most inept Jedi <laughs> master? 
or in the world, or, or is this guy just really, really, really terrible? And, uh, you know, I, he spent all of his practice on freezing laser bolts. Yeah. And the rest of the time, it's just like, oh, no, I, I skipped my classes I, on <laughs> reading minds with my powers. He I skipped my saying, classes. Look, on Master Luke, look, look, I froze the laser bolt. And it looks yes. like, I, I've never been able to do that. That's awesome. Wait, you're, you're oh, you're going to cut yourself with the lightsaber. Oh, Ben. Uh, Shoot. Can somebody bring us a robot hand? <laughs> I was just really surprised by that because he was also the the petulant child when he would throw his tantrums and, you know, destroy panels and stuff with his lightsabers. I felt like, whoa, this this he seems like a spoiled child to me. But at the same time, my cousin was just like, oh, Kylo Ren is even greater than I thought he was. Really? And I, I, I didn't. I didn't get that. I, I, yeah, I, I didn't like him at all. There's this scene at the end where I guess he's been blasted by Chewbacca and he keeps hitting his wound. And I thought, well, that's kind of interesting. I'm not sure what it accomplishes except for, you know, to make him angrier or to show, hey, this is how tough I am or what. I, I, I don't know what it was, but it was unusual. But yeah, he's, he's soundly beaten <laughs> at the end of that movie. And it just takes an earthquake, basically, to save his life. And I felt like that was a misstep. You know, in the same way that if Luke had been able... Did you, did you ever see that comic book? I think it was Star Wars issue 5 or 6, where the cover of the comic is Luke is fighting Darth Vader with his lightsaber. And if Luke had been able to defeat Vader in that very first movie with no training except for with a seeker ball on the Millennium Falcon, well, that's still more training than Ray had. <laughs> but... Uh, yeah, it would have been a huge, huge error on the part of the filmmakers. Just, I mean, part of the courage of Empire Strikes Back is how soundly Luke is just thrashed. Oh, my gosh. I mean, he is schooled, sir, to use the 80s parlance that we were once fond of. I feel like they, they took a wrong turn there with this Kylo Ren thing. But maybe the wrong turn is how great Ray was. Yeah, that was another thing that I was going to complain about. Ray is able to do everything and everything. And yeah, in the last episode, I wanted to talk about one last thing that I liked. And the last thing was Ray. I really liked Ray. I think she's really cool and likable and, you know, interesting and not bad to look at. But I, But she's just so perfect that... It feels like, well... Her story's over, is she? you know what I mean? It's yeah, like she she's need Neo at anything. the end of The Matrix. And I, <laughs> I, I want there to be some growth, there to be some weakness to overcome, some more ground that she needs to cover, but I don't know what it's going to be. I mean, I hope they don't invent something for her like they did in Back to the Future 2 or in Matrix 2. Yeah, she was just oh, over-competent. Is that a word? She was too she good was at all everything. All competent. I heard some. You know, there's the uh, the term that. Yeah, I'll kill you if you say Mary Sue. I'm just warning you. I wasn't going to say Mary Sue. There's oh, that term okay. that we uh, that we riffed on in our Christmas episode, the uh, maniac pixie dream girl. Ah, yes. But I heard another person in one of their reviews of of The Force Awakens who. I don't know if this is a term that anyone else has used, but he called Ray the all-competent ingenue, or the ACI. But yeah, basically it's just the woman who is as good as a man at every single thing without ever having to do the training or any of the stuff that, you know, like Luke, it took him three movies and a whole lot of time with Yoda in the Swamp of Dagobah to learn to become what he became. But for Rey, all she had to do was grunt your face for a while, and then she was able to do the Jedi mind trick. And yeah, she picks up the sword, and this guy, Kylo Ren, he's obviously trained enough that he's got his whole a knight system named after him. And yet she beats him right off the bat, first try. She knows how to fly a ship. She knows how to fix a ship. She can bake a muffin in a, like a second. Really? I... Yeah. She just pours the stuff in. <laughs> poof. 
It's a muffin. I thought you were joking. You're right. There is a scene when she does that. Um, she, but she can do anything. At least she's unattractive. Yeah. You know, she's compensating for something. That's true. She speaks droid and Wookiee, by the way. Yeah. Even Luke didn't speak droid. <laughs> no, he did. He had to have a little the computer on his X-wing tell him what, what. Why the hell would they make a droid that you can't understand? Who designed R2? <laughs> They're alive. I don't know. Who designed, like, why? You know, we'll just make them make beeps. That'll be as good as talking. There, I guess there's a droid that just says gonk, so <laughs> the droid makers are not all about ease of use in the future when they make their gooeys. Well, you were talking about, you know, that this is just the pilot of a show. So it was probably a mistake <laughs> to have the show Supergirl. <laughs> the, yeah, to have there be so little to overcome. But and you know what? Maybe there's method behind the madness. Maybe Snoke is going to say, you know, Kylo Ren has accomplished nothing in the five years I've been training him, and yet, and this girl was able to defeat him with no problem. Maybe she should be my target now. Maybe she should be my apprentice and maybe she's made an enemy of everyone in the galaxy, the entire first order or whatever. And we'll be like, Oh, okay. So her greatness was also a weakness, but I don't know. We didn't talk about Finn. I thought Finn was great, but he's got lots of weaknesses to overcome. And so, you know, I'll, but I look forward to Finn. The weird thing about Finn is he's like a child or something. He, is like a clone, or I'm not exactly sure what they were doing. I, I got the impression at first they were some kind of clones, but then I got the impression that instead they were kidnapping children from people and then raising them as like child soldiers, like I in think, Africa yeah, or it was something. something like that. I don't know that Africa entered into it, but it, it, well, yeah, <laughs> they had like a hollow of him as a baby or something like that. And they did from yeah, and oh, I missed that. And that the stormtroopers all have conditioning or whatever, and he has seemed to have bro broken his. I was referring um, to the child soldiers that exist in Africa. I know you were. Today's were. age. Uh, but <laughs> again, that should have been something that Captain Phasma told us instead of Kylo Ren. It should have been Phasma that knew his number and his uh, identity and all that. So maybe there was a scene because she's like, you know, we, we need to call FNWWW.Doonstief.com in for reconditioning or something like that. You know what I mean? There, maybe uh -huh. we needed that scene. But she didn't tell him to turn in his weapon to be inspected, so she was on the case. Well, was that to determine whether he had fired it? Or I believe so, yeah, because he didn't. Hmm. Anyway, I liked Finn. I, I, I liked. Yeah, he was fun. The choice to have him speak with an American accent, I thought, was a good choice. And he's not American either, too. No, right? he's, he's a British as British guy? as the day is long <laughs> uh, in the summer, not not now. I thought Finn was pretty cool, and I liked his bluster, and then him proving that that was wrong and Han seeing through it instantly. Uh -huh. Oh, and yes, one, one more thing that I liked. Uh, Han Solo. I liked Han Solo. They gave him so much to do. Too much to do? Maybe. Mm. But when he, it was working, when he was firing all, on all thrusters, it was the same old Han. Just the, that's not how the force works. I loved that aspect of Han when he was calling him, what was he calling him? Big deal. Yeah. As, as you know, that's his nickname. And, oh, that was just really, really cool. And uh, it's a shame that we're not going to see more of him until we see more of him. So that'll be good. Did you like Poe Dameron? I did. I thought Poe Dameron was cool. The fact that the very, very beginning, he's like, do I talk? Do you, do you talk? How does this work? And then he's like, I can't really understand you with that mask thing. I, that was just really fun. Uh, yeah, I, I liked him fine. I'm not sure if he's supposed to be like the third spoke in the... The wheel, you know, in the same way that we had Luke and Han Luke, and Leia in uh -huh. the first movie. And that these three were supposed to be a triangle and our main three characters. Because he had a lot less to do than Finn and Rey. But, yeah, uh, he didn't appear. But they did try and talk him up. I, I thought that if this line seemed forced or what it was, but there was like the bit when the resistance X-Wings come flying in and they show... Pose X-Wing and it's flying around and doing all these great tricks and it's shooting down and then Finn's watching him the whole time and goes, wow, man, now that's a pilot. 
uh, that seemed like it might have been a little over the top. That comment, you know, he could have had him watch and be like, oh, wow, or and then go. Yeah, it seemed like he was cool, and he would have been, it would have been nice if he'd had more, if he'd been more of an integral part or whatever of the, the story. It, this movie seemed a little bit less like it's a, a one group moving towards a one goal kind of a thing. You had more disparate elements. Well, I think the, the thing that messed it all up, and boy, I don't mean messed it all up except for and that's what I'm saying, is making Han Solo as central a character as he was. Uh-huh. I don't know why it had to all be about Han. I don't know why he had to go confront his kid who had turned to the dark side and all that stuff. It just seems like the last person that you want to go sway somebody from the dark side of the force is a guy who has no basis with yeah. the force whatsoever. Can use the force, can't feel the force, doesn't. Whereas the, the mother can and could have... Than yeah, much more and of that's the really to underplayed that. too. Because when Han is killed, she clearly senses it and feels it back on her place. Alderaan. Oh wait. But I, I wonder, you know, has she not progressed at all since the Empire Strikes Back? She's, you know, yeah. That she does. knew Luke was alive at the end of Jedi because she could feel it the, for, through the Force. But there's been no training, no progression since then. I wonder. It's kind of a bummer, you know. When they say Luke Skywalker is the last Jedi, it makes me wonder. What have you been doing for 30 years, Luke? <laughs> again, something I talked about last week, but I'm bringing it up again. The panda. What have you been doing for 30 years? If your species is going extinct, start effing. <laughs> Sorry, and that, that was vulgar. I shouldn't have said it. But uh, just anybody who really wants to feel the Force can feel the Force and become a Jedi. Then grab them from everywhere. Run into people in the mall and say... Hey, have I seen you somewhere? That's the force. Come with me and let me teach you how to, you know, I make you levitate things and do Jedi mind tricks. And apparently we can, if you work hard enough, you can freeze a laser bolt in the air. But uh, I, something happened to make Luke abandon that. And, and, unless, did you get the impression that the old man at the beginning, maybe he had some kind of force thing, some connection to the Jedi? Uh, yeah, the old man at the beginning, I, it was... Obi-Wan, he, they killed Obi-Wan again. I don't know how he came back, but that's what he seemed to be. It's just like, well, Obi-Wan's already dead, but let's make a new Obi-Wan and then kill him again. Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I have no idea who that guy was. But yeah, he must have been somebody... I want him to be somebody from the old movies. Yeah, But I, I don't too. know who he could be. Well, he was, no, he was none of them, he, he, but... My cousin said, well, what if he shows up in Rogue One? And I thought, yes, if that happens, I will shut up. <laughs> yeah, if they present a young version of this character in Rogue One, I'll be like, oh, okay, where's my hat? I will be happy to eat that. Can I put ketchup on it? No, because then it would be tasty. Anyhow, I like those three characters, especially Ray. Um... But, yeah, I, I, I don't know where they're going. Is Finn also Force-sensitive? And if so, it would be really neat to see him train and struggle and, and, and become better and all that. Didn't you get the impression he also has the Force? You know, I got the impression that he was... Like, I always thought that he was supposed to be the Jedi guy. Because they show him hol holding the lightsaber and the, On the poster, poster and all that stuff. And so I assumed that he was going to be the Jedi. And he does hold the lightsaber... But he gets he gets his butt whooped. So I, I'm as assuming, you would, right? But I'm assuming he doesn't have the force because if you have the force, well, then you can whoop anybody's butt. Um, See, that's not fair. I, th th <laughs> again, and this is something we talked about last week, but got lost. All of the prequels are gone, right? J.J. Abrams did everything he could but disavow that the prequels ever happened. Okay. So definitely the midi chlorians don't exist anymore. <laughs> Which means anybody can be a Jedi if they tap into the Force, if they let the Force into their heart, like it said on that third trailer. Do you know what I mean? So Poe Dameron could have the Force. So if there were any other characters that had names, they could have the Force. <laughs> Maz Kanada can have the Force. Well, I don't know. She was basically a Yoda, wasn't she? She was like, yeah, I mean, she... She was a thousand years old. Was she? And so was Yoda. Well, you know. 894 is the third. 
temple with a big statue of herself on it. So she yeah, likes that, herself. You're going to have one of those one day if you ever start writing again. Well, I'll get to it then because that's one thing that I've always dreamed about all those years living in the gutter. A solid gold house. I'm uh, sorry, you were going to say something before, uh, but we were talking about force, the force, and maybe, oh no, I had mentioned the prequels. The prequels don't exist, and you were going to argue with that. Oh, okay. Well, then I want to not hear about Darth Plagueis again, please. Well, I <laughs> don't believe that he's Plagueis. <laughs> okay, I'm just saying, you've said it. I don't know if it was today or last week or the week before or when, but... Well, no, guys, there's a, a contingent of die hard with a vengeance fanboys that are convinced that Supreme Snoke. Leader Snoke will be revealed to be Darth Plagueis the Wise, who was the teacher, the master of Darth Sidious, who was Emperor Palpatine. There's no way. Not Sorry. It's, it's never, ever, ever, ever going to happen. But it does bring the question to the fore. Who, who is Snoke? Where has he been all this time? How did he come around? How did Han and Leia know Snoke? He's been snoking on the boulevard. I see, I, I had heard that he'd been snoking in the boys' room. <laughs> oh, yeah? Everybody knows that snoking ain't allowed in school. Okay, well, yeah, that's right. Yes, Luke had opened that Jedi Academy, and Snoke showed up, and he's like, well... Sorry. Snoking ain't allowed in school. <laughs> Good night, folks. Tip your waitresses. <laughs> We so, don't have a lot of time to talk about The Force Awakens before all these new things happen. But at the end of the first time we recorded this, I said, maybe we should do an episode. Six months from now, you know, when the movie has come out on video and maybe we've seen it a couple more times. Or seen the deleted scenes. Because you never know, maybe there's a deleted scene that suddenly makes all of this make mm -hmm. sense. Or you're just like, oh, shoot. And you're like, damn it, why wasn't that really in there? Well, yeah, I mean, if all there needs to be is a scene where, I don't know, where Poe Dameron explains to Finn what happened with General Organa and that, you know, that the Republic has been working, but it corrupted from within. And Snoke was a, a member of the Republic that broke off and started the First Order because he felt like the, Emperor, the Empire knew how to do things. And now look at the chaos in the universe or something like that. And I'll be like, oh, okay, well, thank you, guys. I, I needed to know all that stuff. Now I know, even though it's not part of the movie. And so I thought it would just be cool if six months down the road, we did another Force Awakens episode where we just discuss whether our feelings have changed, whether the movie has become more beloved or less to us. If you've ever learned the Ray theme, <laughs> you know. Yeah, that, we'll have to do that. Before we go, though... In general, you liked Force Awakens? Oh, yeah. Yeah, especially the second time, as I said. I wasn't bawling through the whole thing the second time because I had actually had sleep. But you liked it more the second time? But all the little issues that I've been complaining about for an hour just sort of washed over me. And I, I was like, yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm okay with that. Okay, well, I know we'll never find out. I know Luke's never going to say anything in this movie, so I'm fine with that. So, yes, I liked it a lot. And... Uh, appreciated things that I didn't appreciate the first time. Cool. Well, I look forward to seeing it a second time so I can get that perspective. I've already, I mean, it's been a couple of weeks now. I'm already forgetting even the things that I didn't like, much less the things that I did. You didn't complain about the cantina this time. Yeah, I said a bunch of other stuff. But yeah, that was another one of those things that we had, along with the Death Star and the robot and the Tatooine planet that was just had a different name. There was also a cantina, but there was no droid to get thrown out. We don't like their kind here. Well, because in 30 years, the universe has become more progressive. Yeah. And they, they're, they even allow don't same droid marriages they in don't the galaxy. They don't discriminate far, far against away. droids anymore. So R2 units can marry R2 units. <laughs> yes, they used to always have to marry protocol droids. As R2 and 3PO <laughs> had been married. But now, yeah. Now it could be R2-D2 and R5-D4, for all you care. Yeah, it, their love is forbidden no longer. <laughs> well, that's good. It's good to see that the universe has progressed, despite the fact that there's still an evil empire out there, just with a different name. 
Oh, did we, uh, yeah, last time we complained about General Hux, I'm not going to complain about him this time. Although he still seems awful young to be leading this thing. <laughs> he's, only his friends get to call him Hux. You call him Huxley, all right? Gosh, that's awful. It, it was awful the first time, though, in fairness, that you said it. It's a weird name, Hux. What's oh, Star Snoke. Wars name? Snoke is a... We, did, we already said that, uh, that Snoke is a, just a really bad name. It's terrible. And somebody on the forums, the Doonstie forums, said, well, there's a bad name in every movie. And he mentioned, like, Kit Fisto and Dooku and uh, Plo Koon. And I was like, yeah, you're, well, you're right. You didn't mention... In all the prequels, there are really bad names. But, yeah, Snoke is really, really bad. You can mention some of those, but most of those names were not names that were actually said out loud. Oh, that's a good point. Dooku is the only one that you ever even know. You don't know Kit Fisto or <laughs> Plo Koon. <laughs> There's very few names that are ever actually said out loud, and Snoke is one of the worst. Seems like they could. All the names are a little like Poe and Finn and Ray. Like, seriously? And Snook. And Snoke. And Hux. <laughs> You're right. And, and Moss. Ma, ma, was it Moss or? Moss Canada, right? Okay. I, just, I can never remember her name. What did you think it was? Uh, Mira Mazdur. The hell is Mira Mazdur? <laughs> is that from Dune? <laughs> no, I think it's from uh, Game of Thrones. Han? Stop. Maybe that's what they're... But Han there was is a Leia. good name. Han, Leia, and Luke. The, the kids say Han, Luke, I mean, Poe, Ray, Finn, Han, Luke, Leia. See, Leia ruins it because she's got more than one syllable. Why is everybody one syllable? <laughs> Lando Calrissian wasn't Kylo. one sil syllable. And he Don't, flew the Millennium Falcon. Fuck Lando Calrissian. And he's talking about this movie, though. They're all one syllable. Poe, Ray, Finn. Poe, Ray... Finn. Oh, uh, wait. Stormtrooper. <laughs> Poe, Ray, Finn, Maz, Han, Luke, Kylo Ren. I couldn't do it. Sorry, guys. I tried. I really tried. Well, it's okay. It's probably that you complained about my Huxley joke. Finn, a trooper, a black stormtrooper, Ray, a girl from Daku, fine. Uh, Poe, a pilot who flies himself, Kylo. All right, everybody, thanks for listening. We'll see you next time on That Gets My Goat. We'll be back with something. It'll probably be time for the uh, Deadpool episode by then. We're not going to see Deadpool, no. You take your five-year-old to see Deadpool. That Gets My Goat is produced under Creative Commons, Attribution, Non-Commercial, No Derivatives License. As if anyone would want to copy this. Yeah. <laughs> you keep doing it.